Uh, this bill has to do with taxing of Social Security benefits. Um, as you can see from the handouts that are being passed out, Minnesota is one of only seven states that taxes Social Security benefits. We are essentially taxing our senior citizens twice on the same money. So I've amended the original bill to phase this in, um, this exemption over the next 10 years to limit the impact that it would have on the budget. But I believe that our seasoned citizens have the right to their own money without further taxation. Uh, this was something that was brought to my attention by one of my constituents on the campaign trail. And as I looked into it, I believe it is the right thing to do. I value our senior citizens and I believe the more incentives that we can give these folks, the more likely they are to stay in Minnesota and spend their resources here instead of elsewhere. So just a quick explanation of the bill. The bill would allow a subtraction of taxable social security benefits from Minnesota taxable income and from the Minnesota alternative minimum taxable income. So the subtraction would be phased in starting at 10% of benefits in the tax year 2011 and as proposed be amended increasing by an additional 10 percentage points each year until 100% of the benefits would be subtracted in the tax year 2020 and subsequent years. So um, today we, I have with me several testifiers um, that live near me, one from Woodbury and one from Cottage Grove. And um, so I'd like to um, first introduce Mrs. Judy Wolf. Thank uh, you, please state your name for the record. My name is Judy Wolf. I live in Cottage Grove. And is Wolf W O L F or is w there an E at the end? W O L F. Okay. Welcome to the committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Lomer, for inviting me here today. Mm -hmm. I am a widow. I live on a very fixed income of Social Security and part of one of my husband's pensions. Um, I was very surprised to learn that we are only one of seven states who taxes Social Security. And it's my, I feel like Representative Lomer does, that people work hard all their lives and they pay taxes on their income to begin with. Why would we have to pay a tax on it again? when we are living on fixed incomes. But you don't pay a tax. I guess that's my testimony. Thank you. Uh, you have another testifier? Yes, I do. I have Mr. Lanny Lundquist from Woodbury. Please state your name and if you could please spell your last name for us. My name is Lanny, L-A-N-N-Y, Lundquist, L-U-N-D-Q-U-I-S-T. Uh, welcome to the committee. Yeah, thank you for having us. Uh, I too thank Representative Lomer for inviting us. Um, I talked to her on the campaign trail. She came to my door and we mentioned some of these things, but I hadn't really um, thought about it too much until um, I had till tax time came around. My wife and I are both in a situation where we're just retiring in the last year or two, and she's a couple years behind me, but um, I'm learning uh, about Social Security and uh, one of the things I learned was that my Medicare was coming out of my Social Security and I wasn't really even aware of the Social Secu of the uh, tax on Social Security until it was brought to my attention. And just yesterday I went in and talked to, our, talked to our tax preparer and I would say we're a pretty average income. Um, uh, income is re being reduced, so things are getting pretty tight for us. So every dollar now is getting to be more and more important as it becomes more fixed. <clears throat> and I had my tax preparer just run it through her computer. What would it? What would my taxes look like if this bill did not exist? If if we were not taxed in Minnesota on Social Security, and it came out to six hundred and nineteen dollars, and I was actually substantially more than I thought it was going to be. So it does have a. Um, doesn't break the bank, but it has a major impact on our income. And um, I would just urge you to um, consider this this problem as for for seniors like us as we retire. 